Hello, this is Ross with DragTheBar.com, and for this, um, I just started a session up right here. I have two tables of uh, 200 no limit six max open, and um, they're both uh, 50 big blind min tables, so uh, won't be playing with anyone uh, less than 50 big blinds during this session. Um, just started. I think this is my uh, second round at each table. Just getting everything set up. Um, I'm going to open King-10 here under the gun plus one, King-10 offsuit. And um, this table on the left here, I have Ace-Queen suited in the big blind. I'm getting three bet here um, by the big blind. I'm just going to fold that. don't think it plays well at all against his, uh, against his range there. Um, I am going to three bet here with, uh, with the Ace-Queen suited. I'm going to bump it up from 750 up to uh up to 27 which i think is a pretty standard 3 bet size after after a caller of that the pot is about um $18 before my 3 bet <sighs> okay he makes it a uh, 81 here so i mean he's pretty much never going to uh going to be folding after putting in eighty-one dollars here, but to be honest, I really I don't put him on a big hand here just because um, his open size open seven fifty with um, with the extra big blind in there. I'm I think I'm gonna felt ace queen in this spot. It's not ace queen suited. It wouldn't normally um, always felt ace shove ace queen there but i i find when people make those those huge over bet re-raises he ended up having nines that they don't usually have a huge hand so it's been a while since i've played played the um played uh against a lot of the 206 max regs but i remember back when i used to play when they would make those when they would make the small four bets, they're usually either big hand or nothing. You know what? I've I've seen people make those huge three bets with uh, with hands like you know seven eight suited, just you know suited connectors. They're saying I'm gonna four bet and I'm not gonna fold, making that huge. I mean, wor worst case there, he's gonna have you know maybe queens, kings, ace king is is probably one of the worst hands I'm going to be against there. People just don't four, four bet that big from 27 to 81 with, with aces or kings all that often, at least in my experience. So I think, you know, shoving maybe is a little bit, little bit loose there, but uh, I was just a little curious to see what he had. That's never an excuse to make a, a play like that, but thought that I was going to be okay by shoving there. It was a, actually a flip, and I won it, so I got lucky in that hand. It was actually okay considering um, I was flipping and I already it was already already about forty forty five dollars I believe in the pot. Anyways, um, I'm gonna explain my uh, didn't expect to play a pot that big when I first started the session, but I'm gonna explain my uh, HUD stats here. I use Hold'em Manager and in the uh, upper half it's a VPP preflop raise aggression factor then 3-bet percentage, fold to 3-bet percentage, and then just number of hands played. So I'm going to be folding 8-2 offsuit here to the uh, under the gun open to four times. And I'm going to put a note on uh, Lefty McDoug here just to say that um, he... I have kings here under the gun, so I'll be opening here. I'll put that note on Lefty after, after this hand plays out. And I get a 3-bet mine was under the gun plus one I get three bet by the cutoff here and I have kings out of position in this hand so um, assuming beefcake folds here I'm gonna probably make a smallish uh, smallish four bet which is um, gonna be probably to about I'd say forty two dollars I'm, I'm probably gonna make it even though I'm out of position I I just feel that I can um, they're still not going to be calling these four bets a lot, so uh keeps my range a little bit wider. If I can make, make smaller four bets, I can do it with a with a smaller range or a wider range and then um 
have him shove a wider range at the same time just because I'm four betting light sometimes and he has ace king so uh, we'll see if I can avoid the ace and I do so I won the uh, won the pot uh, CDs play there you know can't fault that at all it's just it's definitely a pre-flop cooler he can never um, I don't think he can ever get away from ace king there but I will um first make this note on CDs here that um, he three bets my under the gun plus one open from six to eighteen with ace king so uh, I just know that um I find that um, a lot of a lot of guys when they make that uh, the smaller re-raise from six to eighteen as opposed to uh, twenty or twenty-two, which a lot of people do even when in position. A lot of guys are doing that with more speculative hands, and they'll do that to uh, a player who's not going to play back at them very often pre-flop. They'll be making the smaller re-raises, but um, that's not the case in this. Uh, in this case he actually did have a real hand he had ace king so just make a note note of that that um that's probably going to be his standard three bet size at least 100 big blinds deep when he has position on me and then i want to uh make a note on lefty mcdog here on the left table that he opened to um 7.5 which would be wouldn't be it would be like three and a is that three and a half three and I think that's three and three quarters so uh, three I'll just play seven point five at two hundred make that easier to uh, easier to say all right I'm gonna fold ace or um, jack king suited here to the uh, under the gun plus one raise I'm just find it's not gonna play well out of position against his range there unless I'm gonna be um, playing back at had a lot of flops so um, just find it's easier to um, to play play tighter out of position pre-flop don't think that's a that's a good call okay as I was making this note here I'm um, he opened a 7.5 at 200 no limit after I remember there was a um, a dead post there so he was uh, definitely had more motivation to open in that hand which is one of the reasons I thought that there was a good chance that he was opening lighter. So we have a kicker here who opened in the cutoff. I'm just going to be folding king king 5 offsuit. And then 5-7 uh, suited on the right table I will be opening. I have a player here. I have 217 hands on him. He has uh, 33 VPP and only 9 preflop raise. So he's not raising a lot preflop, but he is calling a lot. So... Um, it's a good sign to have a player like that at the table. To continue my note on the left table, folding a6 in the cutoff there, you could open that. But um, with a guy that's calling a lot in the small blind, it's probably, you know, it's it's okay to open. Not not bad to fold either there. Making this note after the dead post. Caller on the button. I make it 27 in big blind. He makes 81 with... And then just put his hand nine nine, just to so I know that if he if he ever or does make that huge um, huge four bet where he's putting almost half his stack in and never folding that um, it's a good chance it's going to be a mediocre pair like that. He's just making a huge four bet, you know, trying to you know I really don't know why why people make those huge four bets. You might as well shove if you're going to do that, but uh, just make a note on him that he does that okay I uh, picked up ace nine offsuit in the big blind on the uh, table to the right here and uh, it folds around to me so I won that pot and this LK kicker just uh, made aces full see how how that hand transpired preflop I didn't really um, wasn't really paying too much attention to preflop there okay page opened with uh, 50 big blind stack and he three bet it three bet it to uh, 6 to 18 I'm gonna three bet here um, 
think seven nine suited is a good hand to three bet. The guy doesn't fold to a ton of three bets, but um, I just feel like if I can establish you know an aggressive pre-flop image, that it will um, you know maybe get me action later. Like the three like the three bet often, especially you know even if if I'm deep out of positions, you don't want to get yourself into a ton of uh, of uh, tough spots, which you can get yourself into. But I feel that um, you know I can I can make good plays post flop. I know good spots to um, spots where I should be you know betting. You know I'm not not continuation betting every flop when I when I do get called out of position, which I think is a mistake. A lot of uh, a lot of players at 200 will make they'll you know against the right kind of player it's okay to be continuation betting every flop but um oftentimes it's not An open king four here on the button I think that's a pretty standard open king four if it's uh you know I, I wouldn't probably wouldn't open it might open it if it's off suit but uh definitely king four suit is a hand I'll be opening on the button should be opening a, a very wide range whenever you're on the button just because um, it's the most profitable position you're always going to be in position playing any hand you want to uh, keep your keep your range you don't want it to be super tight and um, on the button you're going to definitely have the widest opening range ace 4 offsuit I'll be uh, folding here under the gun. I open ace jack here in the cutoff which is very standard I think and I get called by uh, CDs who is uh, the guy I stacked earlier pre-flop. I'm just gonna make a standardish uh, continuation bet into a pretty dry flop of king 4-7 and uh, see what he does. He uh, lets me take that one Picked up uh, four ten suited here in the big blind. I won't be playing this to any type of raise, and it just folds around to me, so I take that one down. I'm going to be folding a seven off suit here um, under the gun plus one. Might open that hand if I was in the cutoff. Would definitely open it on the button, but uh, under the gun plus one, it's not. I don't think it's a good open here. I am playing a half stack. So um, I normally would open to to uh, seven here against a full full stack player, but against a half stack player, I think I'm just probably better off um, in the long run just opening opening to three times there, just because uh, stack sizes are smaller. I don't need as big of an open to uh, to take a significant portion of his stack post flop. King six suited I uh picked up here in the cutoff. So um I believe I'll probably open this one if, if nobody opens ahead of me. Alright, it's opened ahead of me, so um definitely just gonna be folding here. One thing I'd like to talk about here with um a player to my right here playing a half stack is that when he is yet to act behind me, I'm never gonna really want to be three betting light. That's a mistake that I'll find um a lot of players at um, at 200 and even even 400. When I play that, they'll be making um, there's a if there's a smaller stack and a guy say a guy open say Rodier were to open the button. I'm in the small blind and uh, Pija here is in the big blind. He opens to six and I three bet to you know 20, which is I might even probably go a little bit bigger just because we're both 150 big blinds deep. Say I make it 22. That's just gonna make it um, so much easier for you know Pija to play perfectly there and just you know shove or fold. And if I'm ever doing that light and he's shoving, that's pretty much just burning money because um, I'm gonna be putting in you know twenty two dollars and then fold for a hundred total. It's just um, I don't think ever good to be three betting light when you have a small stack left to act behind you. So um, I've just uh, picked up five seven suited here on the button. I won't be opening this hand to the right on the right table. Just uh, 
The only time I would open a ham like that on the button would be if uh, there was really tight in the blinds, especially the big blind. Since this guy's playing a lot of hands out of the big blind, big blind, it's not uh, worth opening uh, a trashy hand like that. Picked up 6-4 offsuit here in the big blind on tail on the left. Be folding queen 5 here to the open. He opens the four times, and I'm just going to uh, fold that one. <clears throat> Picked up ace eight here in the small blind, so uh, we'll see if uh, if anybody opens. I I won't be playing this if anybody opens ahead of me. But if it folds to me, I'll make my uh, my three times open here from the big blind. I'll be folding queen six offsuit here on the right table. King do suited on the button. I'll be opening this hand. I'll pretty much open any king suited, any queen suited on the button when it folds to me. You know, given given there's reasonable players in the blinds, which it uh, seems there is. All right, I get called here by uh, Pijo one. Calls my button open in the small blind. So um, I think his range is pretty wide here. He could. Uh, probably be doing that with you know any two broadway cards maybe you know possibly suited connector or even a small pair there trying to set mine with his uh, 50 big blind stack so flop comes i'm just going to continuation bet eight into uh what is a 14 dollar pot here and i get min raised so to be honest i only have 26 hands on this guy i'm not really sure how he plays um how he plays, but I didn't hit any of this flop, so I will be uh, folding even to his min raise. I do find that these guys, you know, the guys who play the half stacks can uh, almost seems like take advantage of uh, of the short stack, the shorter stack by making smaller raise sizes, and you know, not have to pay, you know, not paying as big a consequences by uh making the small check raise with uh with garbage. But um if I were to continue with that hand, choose to continue with the king two suited hand, I would um would probably make a small smallish re raise as I would with a strong ace. So um probably he he raised to 16 if i if i wanted to try to bluff him off of that i might make it 35 there i'm going to be opening 9 10 off suit here in the small blind but um as i said i don't have many hands on him so um just going to uh let him have that one okay i picked up kings on the table on the right i'll be opening that one button folds. I'll be opening king 10 off suit here um, under the gun plus one. It's uh, got action with my kings again. He made it 22. Now this time I'm in position so I'm just gonna make another small re-raise here from 22 to 45 which is about my standard re-raise when we're only 100 big blinds deep and he uh, folds. Here I, my uh, under the gun plus one raise got three bet. Yeah he's really really um, you know he's Deuces under the gun, I'll be opening that one. I'm going to fold here, but he is uh, raised from 6 to 14, which means uh, he's definitely aware of uh, of the advantage of playing a smaller stack and making, because nobody would ever, uh, regular, would never re-raise from only 6 to 14 playing 100 big blinds deep, but he realizes that, you know, he's only playing 120, He's only playing a 60 big blind stack. He can get away with making smaller re-raises and really um, put me to the test with uh, a smaller size just because the stacks are so shallow. So um, the guy definitely knows what he's doing playing, playing the smaller stack by uh, making small small flop check raises, even the flop check uh, min raise, and then uh, at the same time same time uh, making small three bets pre-flop here. It's uh, open in the cutoff, three bet by the button. I have ace queen offsuit, which is a hand I would almost almost always play pre-flop, but I'm not gonna play it here out of position against um, against uh, two players. They're a bet and a three bet. I just don't think 
I'm going to hit the flop, and even when I do hit the flop, there's a chance that uh, I could be dominated against ace-king. And, uh, you know, I could hit the flop and then not even get paid off. Just don't think it's good to cold call three bets out of position, even though we were all pretty deep with, uh, with a hand like ace-queen. Here is uh, under the gun open, and I'm going to call him small blind with fours. See what the flop brings. Uh, ace two three. With uh, a couple of clubs, I am going to check the torture here. See what he does. I'm guessing he's probably going to continuation bet. He makes it ten, and uh, you know I could could make an argument for all three plays here. You know I could be uh, calling this flop, check calling, could um, check check raise the flop and I also could check fold. I think I'm just gonna gonna take the last option and check fold here. I'm not gonna make a, a play at that flop. Flop um it's not, not a terrible flop to make a play at, but at the same time I'm I'm only really representing deuces, threes, or maybe a strong ace like ace queen or ace king which i would um would flat both ace queen and probably ace king too there a lot of the time pre flop but i think um just just since i'd be repping such a narrow range by uh check raising it's not not a great flop to check raise never gonna have four or five there I'm never gonna have aces so there's basically two sets and then maybe a couple of strong ace hands that I'm basically wrapping like four hands by check raising check calling is not terrible on that flop because I am gonna have the best hand some of the time and I'm gonna always have outs there with my straight draw but I just um, I don't I think check folding is probably the best play in that in that spot. I open king queen here under the gun and it folded around and I'm being opening tens here under the gun. The table on the right is only playing five handed at the moment, so uh I'm a little bit short. This guy is sitting out. Get called on the button, my uh open here, and then get three bet by uh beefcake two eight five. So um just going to continue with uh, my aggressive pre-flop play and make a small 3-bet from 24 to 46, which is standard for me. I think he's uh, definitely going to be 3-betting light some of the time because his 3-bet uh, percentage is over 10%. And, uh, and there's a caller on the button which gives him extra motivation to 3-bet, and I'm definitely going to be calling his all-in here, not 3-betting 10s to fold. And he had kings, so uh, I think that's uh, pretty much a cooler. I'm going to be calling here with jacks in the small blind to uh, to the open. And I'll be uh, checking the ace high flop with uh, a jack on it. I'm going to be uh, check raising this flop from... Uh, we're a little deeper, but still going to make a standardish check raise from 9 to 27. And uh, see how he decides to continue against it. I really don't like if I'm going to get 3 bet on that flop. I mean, I'm I'm going to stack off either way most likely with bottom set there, but uh by getting 3 bet there, he's really uh repping either a straight or a big set, maybe ace king, but uh still going to check raise just because the times that he calls the check raise, I'm almost always ahead. I'm just going to flat queens here again on the button to the to the under the gun open just to uh to help keep my range a little bit uh a little bit wider here. He checks to me on the flop, so I'm gonna bet ten into fourteen. And uh we'll see how he reacts to that. He raises to thirty-three, so I'm just gonna flat this uh flop check raise. I think he can be doing this with a lot of hands from uh you know, maybe aces or kings, but uh, maybe a set. But he can be doing with a lot of air too. So I'm just gonna flat that, <coughs> flat that check raise. Turn brings an eight of diamonds, which uh, does bring, definitely brings some draws to the board. He's playing a 235 stack here, and um, bets 52 into 78. 
leaving him 183 behind. So um, I could could flat here, but I think the best play here is just to uh, just to drag the bar on this guy at this point, just because the the churn brought brought definitely brought some draws. I don't want. Uh, Oh, and he had top set on me. Okay. Well, um, I'm just going to be making a note on him here that uh, fold ace 10 here on the table on the right. Just be open uh, ace 9 here on the cutoff. Make a note that he uh, opens 9-9 nine, nine under the gun and uh, check raises 9-3-4 rainbow flop 10 to 33 when we're playing... Um, how deep? How deep were we? We were about. We were about. Let me check the hand history here. About a hundred. I think it was about a hundred and. No, it was about a hundred and forty big blinds deep. All right, I'm in continuation bet here. With my uh, ace nine, into the queen four seven flop. And he check calls. Checks the churn. I'm just gonna check this one behind. Don't think uh I'll be able to make him fold a lot, especially after he won a big pot from me. He's probably gonna think I'm barreling kinda light. So yeah, doubt he's folding that churn card. Make a note on him that he uh calls my cutoff open in the big blind with uh six seven suited. And then, uh, yeah, I already made the note that he uh, opened 9-9 nine, nine under the gun and then check raised a 9-3-4 rainbow flop from 10 to 33, bet 52 on, eight churn, on an 8 churn. Okay, so I'm uh started off the session doing pretty well, but uh lost a couple big pots and I think I'm actually down down a little bit on the session now. Down about a hundred after uh losing my tens to Kings pre flop, which uh which I don't think I played uh played wrong at all. With the uh the Queen Queens verse uh my Queens versus the nines hand, I don't think I did much wrong in that hand either, you know, maybe maybe I uh, could have played it better by flatting the churn, but the the churn uh, was getting pretty dry, so I didn't want to, plus uh, a lot of, lot of river cards might make it difficult for me to play, I don't think it's a bad shove. 6-7 offsuit here, I'm going to um, just be folding to his uh, button open. Nuke till opens here. Um, we'll be making make a three bet here. To uh, nah, just because there's a smaller stack in the big blind, I don't like. And he plays a lot of hands. I don't think six seven suit is a good hand to be three betting. Might three bet there. Probably three uh, be a good time to three bet if uh, if we we're playing uh, full stacks in uh, in both the blinds here. I won't be opening seven three suited on the button in this hand. 9-10 offsuit all open here in the cutoff. And get called by the big blind, who is uh, definitely playing a lot of hands. He's playing 35-25. The normalish aggression factor of 3.0. I'm going to continuation bet 10 into uh, the $13 pot. See if we can take it down. I have a gut shot. And uh, he check folds a flop. <coughs> King Queen uh, under the gun, five-handed. Definitely be opening that one. Eight nine suited. All right, took down with the my King Queen and table on the right, and then my eight nine suited here, table on the left. So um, I think the only um, most interesting spots I've been in uh, 
so far this session have almost all been pre-flop. All the big pots have been pre-flop except for uh, the hand where I stacked off with uh, with my over pair on the nine high flop against the guy's set. <coughs> Don't have a whole lot of um, I have like two K hands on uh, on this guy that I stacked off against. Don't have any notes on him. Probably um, most of those hands were back when I used to uh, play a ton of tables, but. I think that his range is definitely wide enough there that uh that stacking off isn't isn't uh, a huge mistake with queens in that spot. Ace four offsuit. I'll be opening that on the button. You get three bet by uh CDs, which is uh guy stacked earlier with my Kings versus Ace King pre flop. So Made it uh twenty, I'm just gonna be folding ace four off suit. Remember that he uh he did open to eighteen or three bet to eighteen in position. You can see he's uh makes it a little little bigger, a little more normal, uh twenty when he's out of position. Alright there. I'll be opening uh Queen Nine suited in the cutoff. I think that's a pretty standard open too. And it folds. This uh LK who uh, stacked me a little bit earlier is opening the cutoff, and uh, I pick up Ace Jack in the big blind. You could uh, make a case for calling here, but I'm gonna three bet Ace Jack, which I think is uh, is just you know is no better, no worse than really calling there. And he uh, f four bets to 52, so um, I'm just gonna fold this. Ace Jack, see if I can find out anything about his uh I'll look at that in a little bit. I get uh opened small blind against my ace do suited here, nuke tilt. So I'm, I think that's uh pretty standard almost always flat there. He's gonna bet ten, which is almost full pot out of position. I'm just gonna just gonna call that bet with my ace too. Open here with uh again with uh the player here in the big blind playing a small stack that might be a hand I choose to play, but not with him there. Just gonna fold Jack Queen in a small blind. Bet's almost full pot again. Again on this churn. And uh I can't see doing anything besides calling that bet. It's really uh really strange that he's betting so large. Not sure exactly what it means. He could have air. He could have a big hand. So uh, 64, which is uh, close to the pot size, and you know he's really repping um, maybe a backdoored flush or two pair plus, which uh, I'm gonna continuation bet this flop. You know if he has it, I think I'm gonna probably pay him off this time. If he has it, just because uh, I have top pair and <laughs> well, he's repping repping a fairly narrow range by three barreling there. You know, I don't think he's gonna. I don't think he's gonna fire three streets there. Huge, as huge as he did with a hand like Ace King or Ace Queen getting. You know, a good player would do that, but I I don't think new t Nuke Tilt from my uh, experience playing against him is is one of those great players who's going to be able to um to really merge his uh his large value betting range with his bluffs there by a uh, value betting thin there with the hands like ace 10, ace queen, ace king. I could almost take those completely out of his range just just by his bet sizing there and uh pretty much say that his range there is is either two pair, a set, a backdoor flush or air, which uh makes it a lot easier to play to play against him there so I'll uh, I'll make a note that he opened uh king 10 offsuit in the big blind fires what was that an ace look at the hand history real quick as I know it was a suited flop is a it was a ace 3 8 suited suited flop fire 7 off churn. You know what? 
How many are we going to put the suits here? Let's say it's a diamond suited suit to flop fire, seven diamond churn, jack diamond. River big on all streets. Just so we know that uh, when he is bluffing out of position there, he will fire three almost full pot size barrels. Okay, so um, folded here on the left table head trash. Um, here, two, three suited. I might even open this against some opponents, but um, this guy seems to uh, seems to defend a decent amount. You know, he's playing 22-17, so he's not playing real tight. He's probably going to be defending to a lot of my small blind opens, so I'm not even going to uh, going to try to try to steal there. We'll be opening king queen. I'll probably be playing it to an open as well there now that we're um, only five handed. Oh, don't want to raise to eight. So I want to make my standard six uh, three times open to six on the button with king queen offsuit. And I get called by the small blind. Flock comes eight nine deuce rainbow and um, it's not not a terrible flop to uh, to bet but um, I think I'm just gonna check behind this one this time um, and he fires a churn and I'm just gonna fold there I think I think it hand uh, hands that he's calling there in the small blind with her are going to hit that range a decent amount. He's going to be calling there with maybe hands like 10 jack suited or jack queen suited, which a lot of times are going to going to make a play on that flop. Even even pocket pairs there are probably not going to fold on that flop a whole lot a whole um very often. So, you know, it's not not never bad to continuation bet that flop, but uh, at the same time you don't want to be continuation betting every flop and I think that one is is a little little bit worse than some other flops that I could be continuation betting so choose not to that time I'll be folding five six under the gun here all right we have nuke tilt on both tables I have a direct position on him on the one at the right and he just joined the one on the left and he is um, two to the right of me on this one so he's gonna be having position on me on uh, on most of these hands played at the table on the left I'm going to fold 8-deuce uh, offsuit here to the open by the button. He is opening an awful lot of hands. 24% is his preflop raise. And uh, so he's going to be stealing a lot in lay position, but 8-2 is, is just not a strong enough hand to uh, try to play back in him preflop. I'll be folding 8-9 here after uh, the under-the-gun limp, the small stack. Pick up sevens on the table on the left, and we'll be opening this under the gun plus one. I think that's a very standard open. <clears throat> Get called by uh, the short stack here. He's playing a little less than 50 big blinds, about 40 before the hand starts. So uh, it's going to put me in some tough spots here post-flop, playing against that, that stack size if I don't flop a set. Okay, the well, flop comes eight high with a diamond flush draw. So, um, playing against two players here, I will be continuation betting the flop. I think 13 is a decent continuation bet size into a $19, $18 plus 19 if you count the rake flop. And I get raised by the small stack. It's a very small raise, which, you know, he could be doing with so many different hands there. It's just why I hate playing. <laughs> I'm not. I'll, I'll admit I'm not very good playing. Playing a less than a hundred big blind stack, and my time ran out. And it's probably a good thing. You know, the more I thought about it, the more I wanted to to shove. But at the same time, you know, when I shove and get called, I'm never in, in a good spot. I do think I have fold equity there with a shove, even though he did raise into two players. He knows that after he raises that especially with Simona's range, that he's not going to be playing a whole lot. And uh, I, don't, I don't think it's a terrible fold. just had a feeling there that I was going to lose the pot to that, <laughs> to that guy when he called me pre-flop, though. It almost made me want to shove the flop. 
But um, I mean, if I I only have 59 hands on this guy. If I were if I were to start playing a lot more hands with him, I would um, definitely think I would get more of a feel for his range of uh, of making the small three bets and then making the uh, small flop raises on uh, on flops that that don't look like they hit my range very often. Now, if I had you know a hand probably even an eight there I might might stack off any over pair of that flop say I were to have pocket nines or tens I wouldn't even think about folding against him the way he's been playing so far I opened ace jack here under the gun and uh, folded around to me on that table looks like a very big pot here is uh, developing that was a bets almost ninety dollars on the churn into a uh, Pot of uh, 123. We'll see. Um, all right, yeah. The LK, LK kicker guy opened to four times after a couple of limpers. Simona three bet called. Simona check called the four five ten hard hard flop and then led led the ace of hearts turn big. So um oh, Simona's playing that that hand. He's repping a pretty narrow range of uh of a flush or possibly uh maybe maybe a hand like ace ten, I don't know. It's pretty pretty odd lead there by him. But uh it worked for him to take down the pot. I'm gonna be calling this uh cutoff open here in the small blind with fours. And the flop comes jack, king, five. I'll be checking the flop. And uh, bet's ten. You know, some flops I, I would play play back when I don't make my set. But um, with uh, fours here, I don't think... I don't think I'm going to do it this time. You know, he's he's got a really wide range there for opening pre-flop and the cutoff, so... You know, it's it's not a terrible flop to play back at, but I'm not gonna not gonna do it that time. Just see if I can uh, maybe get a little better read on him before I start making plays there. It's it. I'm gonna cut off. Be opening this one for sure. And then sevens here, under the gun open. Yeah, I think I can call here with sevens in position against uh, what's going to be, you know, a decently tight range since he opened under the gun. Uh, flop comes ace, queen, jack. So uh won't be playing here versus uh, almost inevitable continuation bet on this flop. And even if he weren't to continuation bet this flop, I probably wouldn't be betting because uh, a lot of times when you see a guy check like an ace-jack-queen flop like that, they'll be doing it with a hand like, you know, kings or king-queen, where, you know, they they have a piece of it, but they're uh, they're just check-calling to get the showdown. So uh <clears throat> was not going to be playing that hand uh, aggressively post-flop at all on that flop. We get an open here from uh, from the cutoff. I'm in the big blind with two four offsuit. All right, it's three bet by the button. I wouldn't have been playing the hand either way. All right, it's uh, folded around to me. I had nine three offsuit. I pick up ace king here in the small blind. Definitely gonna be playing this one. All right, nuke tilt opens to six. I'm gonna make it twenty out of position here with ace king. We're just just over 100 big blinds deep, but uh 20 20 is still fine. I'm not going to make it any bigger. Still definitely uh definitely can get the stacks in by making it 20. I think um you know, one thing that's good to good to work on, good to pay attention to when you're making your three bet sizes is um anytime when you're close to 100 big blinds to know um what your three bet size is going to be or let let me uh start over what um what your post flop bet sizes are going to be um 
to get stacks in pre-flop. Now, in that case where I three bet from six to twenty, I was um, I know that I can get I know that I can get his stack in on three streets post-flop. You know, if I if I if I bet three streets there, I can make uh, make the sizing work. Now, if you were playing maybe uh, say two hundred and forty dollars, playing one hundred and twenty big blinds, I might. I might make it, you know, 22 24 just because then I can bet the flop a little bit bigger, bet the churn a little bit bigger and then and then the river as well, you know, making it a shove. You know, there's a certain certain size um ace queen here, flop 7 8 10 and um I'm just going to check check fold this flop here. It's uh I don't think that's a good Good flop to continuation bet. He makes a small bet. You know he knows that I'm not going to be uh, playing here, so he's making. You know he probably doesn't have a whole lot here by making that small b bet. But at the same time, a check raise isn't repping much either, so I'm not gonna not gonna play back there. Well, I was talking about just talking about um, the pre-flop sizing. There, I think I was saying uh, there's a certain size. Once you get over, you know maybe. 120, 130 big blinds. You shouldn't even probably just stop worrying about what size that you need to make a pre-flop because you're not going to get stacks in regardless unless you're playing for raises on um, on the flop flop turn or river. But um, I definitely that's something I will will pay a lot of attention to. You know, anywhere from like you know from 120 big blinds or less. Try to try to figure out what um, what pre-flop three bet size I'm gonna play to uh to put to put the opponent's entire stack in jeopardy. Okay, uh Queen two Queen two suited here in the cutoff. Won't be opening that one. <clears throat> three four off suit here won't be opening that in the small blind. Okay, I think um I think I'm gonna wrap this session up once the uh once the blinds get around to me again on each table. So I'll be uh on auto posting on this table and then this this one's a fast table, so I'll click the sit out next blind button here and um uh, nuke tilt opens the cutoff here. I have ace eight suited. Um yeah, I think I can play this hand against him. Especially given that previous uh, hand, where it seems like he's gonna spaz out and fire three big barrels <clears throat> with air a lot. Flop comes nine jack king, so uh, we'll see. Continuation bets eight. This, this is a spot where, um, yeah, I think I can make make a play at. I'm not gonna make a big raise. Make it twenty four here. Because I'm not going to be firing, probably be firing a lot of barrels if he uh, if he decides to call. But you know, I think with um, the flop like that, it's either going to hit him hit him pretty hard or or not. You know, maybe Jack Queen is a hand he would bet, and I don't know if he would call a raise the hand like that. King Queen, he'd probably bet call at least the flop. But um, do do definitely want to make plays sometimes when you don't when you don't make hands. You don't want to just uh, become too predictable where you're uh, <laughs> obviously you don't want to become predictable where every time you raise you you have a big hand but um i think it's in, important to try to try to find good good spots to do it you know try to find spots where maybe you know even there i i was repping a pretty narrow range by by check raising the flop there but um at the same time i don't think new tilt like I said before, I don't think he's a great player. I don't think he's always thinking about um, about those type of things. I'll be opening nines here under the gun for my last hand. See if we can get any action in my last hand of the session. I have a, a pretty pretty um, loose stats here pre-flop. I'm opening a lot on this table on the right over the 84 hands, opening almost... 25% of the time, which is which is definitely a lot. But I think I've been getting a lot of hands here. I remember I had kings. I think I had kings twice, tens, having a lot of pocket pairs, and the ace king a couple times too. So I take that one down, and um, that's going to be my last hand of this session. 
let's uh, bring up my stars here, see, I think I have an idea of what I started this session with, and I think I just about broke even this session. I might have uh, might have lost about ten dollars, and uh, the big the big hand for me this session was the queens, where I stacked off against this set, which um, you know maybe I could have found a fold, but uh, I, I don't think I don't think it was a terrible play by me. He's you know he's got he's got aces, kings, and sets there that beat me, so what was a little bit deeper so the the pot stung a little bit and then then the other other big hand that I that I lost was uh my tens which if I remember I opened I think the cutoff I I opened either the hijack or the cutoff the button called and then there was a pretty big three bet by an aggressive three better which um which uh made me want to uh want to four bet him there and uh and get the stacks in, which I w which I was able to do. Unluckily for me, he had kings. All right, I'm gonna bring up. Um, let's see, uh, not today. Bring up the last uh, last hour or so, and um, show my show my graph for this session. All right, let's size this in here so it fits on the screen. And there it is. The session was just about 177 hands, and I think I ended up losing seven dollars and uh, forty cents. So it was a pretty unproductive session, but um, I think I did did find some interesting spots this session, and um, I hope you were able to uh, able to learn learn some things. Uh, thank you for watching my video, and um, I will be making more videos in the future. So. Uh, if you like this one, definitely check out my future videos. Thanks. This is uh, Ross for DragTheBar.com signing out. Goodbye.